Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you one of the most highly requested videos. That is gonna be my everyday jewelry collection. So when I'm not working in the hospital, which obviously involves a lot of pared down jewelry, if, if any at all, I am usually encased in gold jewelry. I love gold jewelry. I can't get enough of it. I love sparkly things. I love diamonds and gold jewelry, and I just can't get enough. So I really, it really feels sort of like my armor, my pizzazz, my, my juju. It's like sort of like my motivation that keeps me kind of like, I don't know, feeling peppy and good. I'm not good about myself, but I definitely feel like a little frosting has been added to the day when I get to wear my jewelry. So for the days that I'm not in the hospital, I'm constantly wearing my jewelry. I put it on every morning and there are pieces that I don't take off and I don't have to take off. And um, that's why I always wear gold, real gold jewelry for the most part. The rare exception will be maybe the occasional gold plated jewelry, but yeah, I, I, it has to be gold. I'm very, very allergic to pretty much anything else. Anything that contains the slightest bit of nickel is going to really, really irritate my ears, my fingers, my skin. Um, I have eczema, so for me it has to be gold or nothing. And because I'm the type of person that likes to have jewelry that I don't have to take on and off constantly, like to get in the shower or to swim, for the most part, most jewelry that I wear does not need to be taken off. So we'll go ahead and start with my necklace because I think you guys see this probably the most often aside from my earrings that I am always wear. This is a necklace from Maya Brenner, and I have had this since eight years, nine years. Um, it's only broken once, and I've actually sent it back not only for repair once when I broke it, but also to add initials on when I had my first kid, and now I need to send it back. I just, I leave it on all the time, so I keep forgetting to send it in and get a J put on for Juliet. But yeah, I have my initial, my husband's initial, my child's initial, and a star. And you can add like a little diamond, a little mini diamond. You can add so many things. Like if you see, this actually started as just a KB and the K and B were sort of on the side here asymmetrically. And then we added stuff as we went along. So now it's just kind of adds a little bit more sparkle, a little bit more flash throughout the day. Moving on to my earrings. This is Pavoy from an Amazon Essentials video that I recently filmed and posted. This is an R8 New York uh, natural, it's called natural pearl huggy, like drop, pearl drop huggy. I forget the name, but I'll link it. And I have a coupon code with them as well. And um, it's just the same on this side. I don't have any other piercings other than these two, but I do want more. I just can't seem to find the time to do it. I always forget. What you'll also find me wearing occasionally is, um, or most of the time actually, is either like a longer, sort of fa more fashionable necklace, like a locket that I always put pictures of my kids and my family in, or um, I will wear my Van Cleef uh, Guilloche gold vintage Alhambra necklace, single motif. So yeah, that's a long word, but anyway, it's just a nice um, solid gold special piece of jewelry that I have in my collection. We're gonna see a lot of special pieces of jewelry in my collection, but you will notice that my tastes are kind of run the gamut in terms of price point. I don't mind spending more for quality jewelry. I know that some of some of you may see like what I wear and think that it's all about the brand name. It's really not. I just have a passion for a couple of brands that are well known. And then I really like collecting sort of different pieces from less well known brands. They have to be good quality. They have to be something I don't have to take on and off constantly like throughout the day. Yeah, so we'll go into that. The first is going to be one of my uh, Rolexes. This is a vintage Rolex from the 1980s. And I found this and um, it exactly matches a watch that my mom has and bought in the 80s and wore all throughout my childhood, which is, so this really reminds me of her. And it's so rare for me to find the exact model from the exact decade in the exact like sort of custom style that it is. But this is basically a Rolex ladies date just with diamonds on the bezel and then diamond hour markers. And it has a gold face and the gold, all gold presidential bracelets. Yeah. Love that. 
I don't normally like small watches. This is the only one I wear that is this small. Um, everything else, else I wear will typically be a men's watch or an Apple watch. I wear an Apple watch when I'm in the hospital. And then this is the very special five motif guilloche vintage Alhambra bracelet from Van Cleef and Arpels that I have not taken off since the day I got it. Um, it's solid gold. It's super, super beautiful. It's super like just these flashes of light that it brings from the guilloche is stunning and I've been wanting it for a long time and it was super hard to come by from my Van Cleef dealer. The reason I really liked this one is there's only a handful of these vintage Alhambra styles that are all metal and still beautiful and you know classic and gorgeous but the other ones will have precious stones or like opals or, or malachite which you're about to see that are very sensitive to water and hand washing and stuff you guys know i do a lot of hand washing so i wanted to match my necklace but i also you know kept that in mind and then i recently moved my white gold cartier love bracelet from this arm to this arm just to break it up a little bit i was feeling like it was getting a little bit too much on this side like a little too heavy on that side so i did move it over here and i think it really can have a, a nice opportunity to stand out on its own where i don't think it really did before it was surrounded by so much other stuff that it kind of looked dull and i wasn't like liking it as much it is probably my least favorite of the love bracelets because i just don't think that cartier does white gold very well i think it tends to come off very gray in hindsight i probably wouldn't have chosen this but it, at the time i had a rose gold and i thought it paired very well with the rose gold um, now that I've got my gold and my rose gold together, I do think that I would have preferred to just have these two instead of the white gold, but this was for my first Mother's Day. This was rose gold. Well, I'll get into what that was for, but this was, I got for my first uh, Mother's Day and I will obviously never part with it because that's a really important milestone and it's sentimental to me, but in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have chosen this. And so if you're considering a Cartier Love bracelet, I don't think that that's my favorite thing that they do. You know, I don't think the white gold is like my favorite thing. Now, if you do get it with, I think diamonds or any other precious stones in their white gold jewelry, I think they rhodium plate it. So that tends to make it look a little bit brighter and whiter. It's something I've considered doing. I don't know if I'd have to pay to get that done at Cartier or if I just take it to a dealer to get it rhodium plated, but it's something I'll explore down the line. It's not an urgent issue, you know? All right, moving to this hand. This is, well, we'll start with my rings. So lots of Cartier here. So Cartier uh, classic model, because they do have a smaller, more delicate model. I, I, I think they have a, this is the classic, whatever. Trinity ring, which is three different rings kind of looped together in this way that it kind of moves in this really interesting fashion. You guys ask me about this ring constantly. You see it in my videos and in my Instagram stories and stuff, and you're always like, what is that ring on your right hand? It's it's this one, it's always been this one. I've had this for several years now. I think you guys probably saw in a vlog when I picked this one up. And then here, I have some new additions and then some oldies but goodies. So this is my Cartier Love Wedding Band, which is a slimmer version than the normal Love Ring, and also less expensive, which is nice. And these two flanking rings are from Orate New York. Again, I have partnered with them before and I really love their jewelry and I don't have to take them on or off. Although I do take everything on this finger off. I take my wedding ring off. I take my watch off. I take my nail bracelets off. That's it. Well, that's what I take off before I go to bed. Um, and then on the arm here, the wrist, I have the petite model, the small model nail bracelet with the diamond pave head. This is called a just un clou, which is just a nail. And this is the newest, semi-newest. Um, these two are both relatively new pieces. Actually, these are all these are all really relatively new. This is like my oldest thing on my wrist right now compared to what you guys have seen. So just un clou. The yellow gold was given to me by my husband or my family, you know, my husband and my children for Juliet's birth. This was my first love bracelet ever, my first piece of Cartier jewelry. And it's the rose gold, which was for Harper's birth. And then this one is the Malachite, the um, vintage Alhambra bracelet, just like the one on this side, um, but in the Malachite, which is, you know, sort of, it's green like emerald, which is my birthstone. I love everything emerald green. It's just one of my favorite colors and it's something I've really been embracing lately. Um, and then this is the pink gold, just include regular size with the pave diamond head 
So there you have my everyday jewelry collection. Again, um, I don't, I'm not wearing all of this in the hospital and I'm not always wearing every single piece every single day. Uh, for example, I do have a Stephanie Gottlieb rainbow amethyst. I think they're all amethysts. It's a rainbow bezel tennis bracelet that I wear constantly. I just don't happen to have it on today. Um, you know, sometimes, it, you know, too much is too much, right? So I don't have my locket necklace on today. I don't have my, my guilloche, but you're obviously, you've already seen them in the B-roll footage. But yeah, that's, that's sort of, I just enjoy it. It's like part of my outfit. It's part of my identity. Everybody knows that I love jewelry and that I wear a lot of jewelry. You know, people that I work with at work know that I love jewelry anyway, because I always compliment them or compliment patients on their choice in, in uh, fashion and jewelry. But yeah, so there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Maybe you're searching to invest in your own luxury or jewelry collection. Remember, you don't have to spend a fortune to get the pieces that you want. Like I said, I, it, it runs the gamut. Some things, some things on my hand were like $80 and some things are, you know, more than 8,000. Remember, Rome isn't built in a day. This is over like a decade of collecting jewelry. And, oh, I forgot to mention my wedding ring. Duh. Yeah, I should mention that probably. I've done a whole video on this bad boy, which is my Lauren B engagement ring. And um, I had this custom made. And so if you want any information on that, you can click on the little information bar. And then this one, I don't think you guys have seen either, but it's by The Clear Cut, which is an Instagram account, a jeweler I, I follow, who's based in New York as well. Um, I ordered this because this sort of suited me better than the other wedding band that I had ordered from Lauren B. It's nothing on Lauren B, but I just liked the thickness of it and I liked that it was gold to kind of tie it all in. And yeah, that's that. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend who also loves jewelry and I will see you in the next video. Bye.